hands than he writes there. And I'm Cher, convener for Waikiki Spinners and Weavers and store manager for New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn. Welcome to episode 10 of Wahibi Forage. And as you can see, I'm all cosy and snug in my tiny house cowardy button. I spent the day reorganising and shifting furniture. I brought something from the op shop the other day. I'm, I've been thinking, you know, with my tiny house, I'll find storage solutions and I've been watching videos and I either... Uh, you know tiny house videos storage videos and I, I haven't really found what I want or my style so you can just see the cabinet just here um, I've revamped it and I'll I'll show you uh, a better picture of what it's looking like now so I reorganized the whole uh, fare iti to accommodate the, my new cabinet uh, it is a work in progress I still am not sure what kind of style I want but I think I'm going to say to the universe surprise me <laughs> and we'll see what happens. When I went to Wellington last time I brought a little Frida um, patch and I've now put it onto a bag and Kathy the maker my friend on Instagram said she was very keen to see what I did with it and here it is. So this is on uh, the my Chiagu knitting kit that I bought for my birthday last year because I needed a, I needed a, needed a sticky back so I peeled off the sticky back, stuck it down and the embroidery stitch that I used was a crested chain it was super fun uh, to make I used a DMC cotton that changed colour, one of the colourists uh, range, I can't remember what number but it looks super cool so yeah and then I for around the um, butterfly I thought it was too heavy so I just did a, a simple uh, blanket stitch around there. So that's what I did with my Frida decal yep. too. I've been making a sample for work, Birds and Ships uh, by Caitlin Hunter. So I just need to uh, block it a bit more. So I've knit this in a touch uh, possum silk merino. It is a light uh, DK. Okay, so this is knit on US six needles which is also known as a four millimeter this colorway is c15 and it's called galar really love the pattern as soon as this new color came and i said to tracy i know exactly what we need to do with this i've still got a substantial amount left of um of the ball it's quite a lot left uh, it is, um, I'll, I'll weigh it and uh, find out how much I've got left. So I've only got, you know, a few stitches left and I would have cast off. So I've just, um, I've knit this, the pattern says to knit it on a three and a half, but I've gone up to a four mil needle and I'm casting off with a four and a half, just so it's a nice loose cast off. And this is a new project bag. Project. It's quite a cool little bag. So I've sewn <coughs> these little clasps, that are actually key rings I believe, like key, key ring hooks. I've sewn them onto, <coughs> onto the bag uh, with some beautiful um, stitches here. And I did a top stitch and picking up three of the colours from the bag, just a running stitch along the top. And it's just given it a square bottom. And so to close it I just roll it up like this and put it around, clip that on and it's quite handy because it will clip onto another bag. Um, when Tracy went to Japan she um, bought a whole lot of beautiful Japanese fabrics and made some bag kits. So this is a reversible bag kit and so if you want to with this little project bag, if your bag is full of other things, you can put your small project onto there, clip it onto your bag and away you go without having to squish everything. It's a great uh, size for small projects, cowls, gloves, socks. Um, yeah, a brilliant size. I might make some more of these, but really happy with that. Which I had to make um, super quick because I needed a new project bag because all my project bags were full of projects. I could have finished some, but I mean, where's the fun in that? 
So I made a new project there. This is another little project. Now I'm going to make some curtains for the tiny fuddy. And Tracy had a good idea to uh, to do a small thing first to practice the stitches and get a feel for what I want to do. So I want to use a lot of the eco dye fabrics that I've made. And uh, so I've made a simple Japanese knot bag. This is my favourite part here, I think. I sort of took the outline of the leaf that was already there and extended it down here and put it on there. So when I do that, it becomes a, a nice little feature. So this is the other side. The brick is linen, bits of silk. This one here is an, a poly cotton bed sheet. And all of the uh, fabric I've pop, uh, popped into iron mortar to satin the colour. Uh, these little specks along here, uh, pahutakawa flowers, and you can see some gum leaves, some rusty nails. Uh, this over here is marigolds on this beautiful silk fabric here. And yeah, so I had a great fun, this is great fun to do this, and I've got a real good feel for you know making curtains for the tiny house so I want to use the fabrics that I've made and not introduce anything with a lot of toxins into the house because it's a small environment that I'm living in and I, so I want to keep it as natural as possible. Well, up to with my curtain construction so far it's just choosing some fabrics really so this is the fabrics that I've chosen uh, that I dyed last year when I was doing a teaching a dyeing workshop uh, some of these, uh, this is some wool blanket I got from Annette Montgomery. And I bundled up some of the bundles in this lace. So you can see the, all the beautiful colours, so I'll incorporate that. Uh, another, quite a plain one, which will really be good to play around with stitches on top of that. <coughs> I have pinned some fabric onto another piece of fabric just to get an idea just to start me off so this is where I'm at at the moment with my curtain project so I've used rusty door handles for the effect there and again another blanket which I uh, dyed when I was doing the eco dyeing workshop teaching that and some of the thread that I've chosen is some hand spun silk I um, was doing some solder dyeing on the windowsill of some tulips and silk and this is, it's a very subtle soft salmon pink and then I hand spun it uh, on a, a support spindle so it's quite fine. That is the work in progress so far with the inspiration uh, completed of my little bag which I am using to hold a some outlaw oh, yeah, upside down. There we go. And that's uh, that I'm preparing for the class that I'm teaching at August nights. Uh, so what else have I been up to? I made this jumper. This is called the Ida sweater. I did go off pattern quite a lot. Uh, I wanted the sleeves longer and it was an interesting pattern to do because a lot she assumed you knew a lot already of what you were doing around sweater. It was a fun knit but I did stray off pattern quite a lot just to give you an idea of how far this is all my notes of you know what I was doing to change things it was a good pattern to do that and feel confident for me to um, to actually stray from the pattern and then here's the back and so I wanted to make a mohair jumper for quite a while and my friend Joyce came into the shop going I want to make this and I went oh and so we quickly searched for a pattern and we went uh, and we did the pattern together which was good because she hasn't done any uh, anything like this before so I was able to be a few steps ahead and and having done a, a, Kate, a Kate Davies pattern just recently bottom up I was pretty confident of what I was doing so you can see I had different sleeves and stripes and I just played with color and then here in merino so I'd already used uh, two balls and I had enough but I knew it wouldn't be enough to finish the neck so I finished the neck in, in the blue and you can see it's going around like that I think what I am going to do because I find it's a bit big here uh, I'm going to pick up stitches and uh, knit uh, 
knit around here and just make it a little bit longer do something different but I really love the sleeves it was a really fun experiment to do to play around um, 8 mil needle with this and I used a 7 mil needle doing the sleeves I think I could have actually gone considerably smaller uh, five and a mm -hmm. half even the tight rib around here and I did do a two by two rib but it just wasn't tight enough and you know as you wear the mohair it relaxes and gets quite floopy so so for my next jumper I decided to do an Isabel Kramer pattern oh. uh, I'll put the name here uh, and this one, I really love the, this uh, touch of my hair. It is super soft. It's nothing like that 80s my hair at all. And I really liked how quick it was to make. But I thought, you know, I wanted to take advantage of the, um, the softness of the, the yarn. And I thought going back down to a six and a half would really help. And this pattern was perfect. Um, bang on gauge uh, I didn't do a swatch I just knitted some and then measured it and I didn't block it so uh, yeah another raglan sleeve but this time top down I have finished uh, I have done the rib because I didn't know how much uh, wool was going to use because I am going to change the pattern a smidge at, and it's a lot shorter uh, in her pattern I think she said to do 34 centimeters and I've gone, I ripped it, actually I'm, I knitted it till 30 centimetres and I thought well I can either keep knitting or um, rip back. So I ripped back to 24 centimetres and then I did the rib and some German short rows, oh. duck egg blue that you can see there, a lovely colour. So far that's, um, with this it's two skeins, so I'm going to be able to make this whole um, jumper with three skeins. My third skein is uh, the white baked which is this beautiful colour. So my plan is to knit down to here if I have enough yarn so I'm pretty sure I will have enough yarn. So that's why I finished uh, the neck first so I'm going to knit both sleeves and see and see if I can use up all of this uh, yarn. And the plan is for the rest of the arm so from the elbow down is to knit in the uh, white bait and do a slight flare, uh, a long flare. And it hasn't taken me long to knit. This took me probably two and a half weeks to knit. Um, I've been going a bit slower on this because I've been focusing on the, um, the Birds and Ships by Caitlin Hunter. And this is oh, so scrummy and I can't wait to wear it. So this is the beautiful yarn that I have been spinning to make a Kate Davies jumper on 316 grams so far and I do have nothing is very far away when you live in a tiny party. So this is what I've got on the bobbins at the moment. I have been waiting for my fibre to dry. It's nearly dry. So this is the beautiful uh, fibre herd, uh, Corridale, you can see. we've just had rain and rain and rain and rain and more rain and rain and it's very rainy. Another project but it's been on hold because I haven't been 100%, first of all I wasn't 100% sure of the colours that I was using and then the other thing I wasn't sure about the neck. Uh, with my uh, another Caitlin Hunter design, uh, this is uh, Sedultner but I tried this on this afternoon and the neck still sort of comes up here and in the actual picture and the pattern uh, it's a little bit further down okay. so uh, so this is the project so far I think I might also have it a little bit tight around here so it can't kind of relax it seems like it would go but I think the the stitches around here are a little bit too tight so what I might do actually is instead of doing the colour work here, just do the whole thing in one colour. Because I noticed in uh, Caitlin's sample, she's got two colours very close together and so they merge. So I might do that. 
So the got option. this far, not happy with the colours really that I've chosen. They're not really singing to my heart. So yeah, I think I'm going to rip it out. You can see that this is a dark, dark purple. So instead of doing that, I'm going to change out the colours for um, taking away the bone and the parchments together now. I'm a lot happier with this choice. I'm going to do that all off, off the stitches. Slowly off and there goes the there goes the stitch marker. So now I'm just going to rip it out. And um, yeah, it's going to be a bit tricky because I've got two colours going on. Funny, so a funny story. Uh, many years ago I used to come and visit Margaret and we'd sit on after I'd done the markets often covered in glitter with my fairy wings on and I'd sit on the couch on a Saturday afternoon and uh, Margaret and I would sit there and have cups of tea and I'd watch Margaret knit this cardigan uh, taken her three months to knit this beautiful card cardigan in this uh, lilac colour anyway she'd finished she cast off she then tried it on now Margaret was um, uh, just an amazing, she was the only person I knew at that time to knit in the round. She would uh, knit bottom up, leave the few stitches under the sleeve, then do the whole thing and knit. And it used to just blow my mind. I went, oh, I could never do that. And well, I can now. Margaret's been a great influence. And anyway, so she tried on this cardigan and she went, no, nah, don't like it, doesn't fit. And then she proceeded to snip the end off and unravel it. And here I am, sitting on the couch, just hyperventilating, going, oh my god. And I couldn't imagine, um, you know, ripping out three months of work. And here I am, ripping out. <laughs> well, not so much three months. It was only a few weeks. But, um, yeah, I have no problems now if it's not right and it doesn't sit right to, to rip it out. And Margaret still laughs about that time I was sitting on the couch because look on my face. <laughs> I was absolutely horrified of, um, of, you know, thinking all that waste of time. But uh, yeah, now I realise that if you're not happy with it, rip it back. If you've made a mistake, rip it out because, you know, it's there's no point in knitting on and pretending it's not there because every time you look at that work, that mistake or yeah that mistake will be just sitting there glaring at you going ha ha you didn't unpick me well I think ripping out color work is going to be a little bit trickier so yeah I'm going to be a lot happier with the other colors I'm going to swatch them out I do have another project uh, that I have that I would like to start but I'm going to make myself um, cast off a few projects first before starting the new one and I did have good practice with the German short rows doing this I'm feeling a lot more confident with uh, the German short rows oh hang on a second I've made another project bag I'll just go get it bag getting ready for my next project uh, which is this one here uh, and it's Junker's fault. So we have um, someone new working in the shop with us, with Tracy and myself, and that is Junker. And she is one of my new uh, enablers, apart from my other friend Suzanne, who's another great enabler. So anyway, uh, Junker is making this at the moment. It looks absolutely amazing. Felt completely inspired. So once I've cast off a few projects, I'm going to be casting on that. So originally, I was going to make um, a faded shawl. Uh, unfortunately, my desire to make the faded shawl has faded. So I've put aside for the other project that, that is now going to become the mould um, sweater. As uh, the fibre to go. And it's a beautiful colour. More fibre to go. And more fibre to go. Beautiful colours. I think these will work really well to get it. Malabrigio. Because, you know, who could resist? Oh, I have some dough spin in here. I bought a little um, pack of six 
and I did start making something but it didn't work for me so I've unraveled it. So it's a gradient um, that goes from purple. This is my fibre to go collection. Yeah. Zilana lace. And uh, oh, this oh, is a and look, it's more fibre to go. So uh, yeah, quite a lot of fibre to go that is going into this project and a bit of the Brigio. I have and some Zilana as well so mostly New Zealand yarn so that is just waiting for me to cast off and see. when I go to knit August nights because I'm at a stage where it's a bit of mindless knitting and it'll be perfect for socializing and drinking wine and um, and just a bit of uh, plain uh, yeah, a bit of plain knitting so I've tried it on and it looks great. Uh, this is how far I've got. I did a little bit of more knitting when I went on to on retreat. So that's a project I'm taking with me to knit August nights. And I might take that to Ashburton as well. Uh, just because it's a bit of a mindless knitting stage. I've got a little bit. I've got the lace panels to do. I'm halfway through knitting the front. That I've got to knit the back. And then insert the lace panels and then I've got so I've got the two lace panels to insert. And that's all from me and Kauri Button, my little fari iti. Uh, Kaki Tiano.